Hello, this is question five from paper one from the 2020 Ordinary Level Leave Insert exam. Up the top right, you'll find a playlist that has all my solutions to the other questions that are in this paper. And below the video, you'll find a link to an image of this question. So you can try it before looking at this solution. This question is split into part A and B. Part B is the larger part involving drawing out a graph. Part A simply wants us to solve this equation here. So let's solve the equation x squared minus 3x minus 4 equals 0. Now there's two ways to do this. I'll, I'll show you the first way and then I'll quickly sketch out the second way. It's a quadratic equation. We factorize it. So we open up two brackets and we want two brackets that will multiply to get this. And they're going to have an x and an x because x times x will get x squared. And then we need two numbers to multiply to get 4 and add or take away to get minus 3, or multiply to get minus 4, add or take away to get minus 3. That's going to be 4 and 1. And let's make the signs work. A minus 4 and a plus 1 will work for everything. Minus 4 by 1, minus 4. Then x by minus 4 is minus 4x's. 1 by x is plus 1x. So minus 4x plus 1x is minus 3x's. And that's it. Uh, once we have factorized, we have two numbers that multiply to get 0. Well, that means this number must be zero or this number must be zero. That's the only way we can multiply and get zero. So if this is zero, well, that means x must equal minus one. We take one from both sides. Add four to both sides, we get x is equal to four. So there are two possible answers for this question. And that's it, you're finished. So if you're able to do this factorizing bit, you're finished. Lots of students hate this. Um, so other students tend to use the minus b formula. So x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. I recommend this to students if they're really just not good at doing this. And lots of students are bad at doing this. All you need to do is fill in a, b and c. a, b and c are all written here, except for a. It's invisible. It's the 1 in front of the x squared. a is equal to 1. b is equal to minus 3. Remember the minus, and c is equal to minus 4. You'll get the same two answers here. You'll get two answers because of the plus or minus. I won't do the rest of it out, but that's uh, how we do this question. Now, I'll rub this out and I'll do part b. I'm going to have to do a bit of drawing and a bit of filling out a table. Okay, here's what we're given in the exam. A table here, a, an, equ an equation, and a graph here. They want us to, well, they split it up into parts. So this all part B, part one, they want us to finish this table, part B, uh, part two, I should say, they want us to put the graph on here, and part three is going to get a bit more complicated. We'll get to that when it comes. Okay, so let's do it in parts then. The first part is, they want us to fill this table in. Now, what does that mean? Because you'll see this nearly every exam. So it's important you get marks there, because there's lots of marks available. Every number you put in, they'll give you, I think, half a mark for it. Every dot you put on this graph, I think they give you half a mark as well. So there's lots of marks to be got. So what this means is x is equal to minus 4. What is fx? Or another way to say f, instead of fx, f minus 4. Because x is equal to minus 4. So what is f minus 4? And we simply just put in minus 4 everywhere there's an x. So there's a minus. Now we get to the x. Minus 4. That x is squared. So we'll square the minus 4. We have a minus, then we get to x, we put in minus 4. Make sure you're putting both of these minuses in. Then we get a plus and we get a 6. Simply put all that into your calculator. Uh, don't try and do it in your head, I wouldn't suggest, unless you're really good at it. And if you're really good, you're probably not watching this video. <laughs> so minus 4 squared is 16. Minus 16. And minus by minus is plus 4. So we have minus, let me write all that in, and uh, minus 16, we get plus 4, and we get plus 6. This is 10, take away 16, we get minus 6. And we need to do that for every one of these. They've already done one for us, so we can double check your, your work. Um, I've already done this out, so I'll just fill in the answers. But you'll need to do this in your own. Let, let me do one more, the easy one. Um, F0, I simply... Put in everything, minus 0 squared, minus 0, plus 6. But minus 0 is still 0, so this is just 6. That's an easy one to do. Uh, let me fill in the rest. This will be 0, 
this is four, this is six. Now, once you've done this one, there's a handy trick. I know the next is four. I know the next is zero. If I went to three, I know it's minus six. And that's just because it's symmetrical. Quad, uh, quadratic equations are symmetrical around a certain point. So once they're repeated, I know it's gonna stay repeating. But don't worry about that if you're not sure what I mean. You just fill out this for every single one. It'll take five to 10 minutes. You need to do this for every single number and you'll get points. And that's it, you know, that's part one. And that's lots of points for that, by the way. Part two, this is also lots of points and it's very easy. They want you to put this information on this drawing. That just means, um, well, let me write this in. This is the x-axis. We often call this the y-axis. We could also call it the fx-axis. It's the function in and the function out. What goes in, what comes out. So when minus four goes in, minus six comes out. So we put a dot down here where they, those meet. When minus three goes in, what comes out? Zero. So we put a dot where those two agree. When minus two goes in, plus four comes out. Put a dot. Minus one goes in, plus six comes out. When zero goes in, a six comes out. When one goes in, a four comes out. And when, um, when two goes in, zero comes out. Is that, that's all, yes. Uh, I, I have an extra number, we won't bother putting that in. This has just got you lots of marks. This has got you, every one of these dots that are correct have got you lots of marks. And uh, one final thing though, they want you to draw a line between them. Do not get a ruler and draw, do not um, get straight lines with curve, with um, corners like this. They want one smooth drawing. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, it just wants you to try and go through every dot. I think you're allowed to miss one, if I remember correctly. Something like this. Uh, they would really like to see this happen. See at the very top here, there's two dots. If a student were to do this, you, I think you would lose a mark. They want to see it go a bit above it there like that. They want a nice smooth curve because they're, they're marking you on the shape of this. But that, that should be full marks for part B, part two. B part three gets a little trickier. It's actually quite easy if you know how to do it. For example, like I would be able to get full marks in five seconds, but for a, it's gonna be a little harder to understand um, for some students. Let me write what they tell us. They tell us GX is equal to F, uh, let's see, it's X minus two. And they want us to draw GX. FX, is, this is FX, let me put that in, in red here fx and i'll get a blue marker and i'll draw gx in well i'll do the work first though so how do we know what gx looks like we do the same way we did fx it's important to remember what i said when drawing fx i put minus four in what came out i put minus three in something came out i oh actually i should i shouldn't start with minus four though because they do tell us that it only goes between minus two and um, plus four. So they're not interested what happens when I put my, when I put minus four in. So let's start where they wanted this to. You wouldn't lose many marks for this part if you didn't uh, understand that. But what this one asks us to do, put uh, all the numbers between minus two and four in. So let's do it. Let's put minus two into G and see what comes out. So G minus two, that's, I'm putting minus two into G and it tells me what comes out. That's what the equation tells me. What comes out is f minus two minus two. That's all, I just put, everywhere I see an x, I replace it with what I put in. Everywhere, sorry here, everywhere I see, see an x, I replace it with what I put into the equation. So what comes out, of, if I put g minus, f, minus two in, what comes out is f, well minus two minus another two is minus four. That comes out. Now that's not a number, so it's still a little confusing. But it is. F minus four. We did it already. We know exactly what it is. It's, um, oh, I never wrote the number. And <laughs> it's minus six. Minus four went in, minus six came out. Minus six came out. Now let me get a, a, a blue marker. Um, when minus two goes into G, what comes out? When minus two goes in, 
It took a while, but what came out? Minus six came out. So it meets about there. Now let's see what happens when minus one goes in. Let's do it all out again. We'll see a pattern in a moment. I don't think we have to do this for every point, but we'll see a pattern. When minus one goes in, um, G minus one, that'll equal F minus one minus another two, which is F minus three. And we have that one done as well. F minus three gives a zero out. Now let me write that here equals zero. So when minus one goes in, zero eventually comes out. So we just get a zero here. Let's do one more. Uh, when G, when zero goes in, when zero goes into G, what comes out? Well, that equals F. Let's do it up here. F zero take away two. So it's just F minus two. And we know what F minus two is, it's four equals four. When zero goes in, four comes out. And we get a dot here. Do you see a pattern yet? Um, have a think about it. Pause the video if you don't. Um, I'll make it clearer now. Pause it if you don't want the answer. The pattern here, when we, ne we didn't do anything for this, these two. We didn't do anything for these two. When minus two went in, minus six came out. When minus one went in, zero came out. When zero went in, uh, four came out. Yes, this is correct so far. The next one will be six, the next will be six, and the next number will be, uh, let's see, four, and the next number will be zero, if we go all the way up to four here. Now, can you see the pattern yet? These numbers are the same. They're all the same, they've just moved two. And that's why they've moved two, this number two here. So when I put in um, when I put in one into G, I'll get F minus one. F minus one was right here, so it'll actually give me uh, this number here. Uh, the next one will give me a number here. The next will give me one here, and the last one will give me one here, and I'll get this shape. Very similar shape, in fact, identical shape. It's just been moved to the right a little bit. And that's it, that's full marks to this. You'll see a question like this regularly enough. Um, this minus two moved, every, moved the picture to the right. Or the way I like to think about it is, it moved the axis to the left. Minus moves it to the left. But that, you don't need to worry too much about that. Okay, hopefully that answers all your questions about this. If you have any follow-ups, let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to answer. Um, until next time, have a great day.